Welcome back to The Gifted Ones, folks, and I'm your guest, Liz Throp. I am so <laughs> excited. <laughs> I'm interviewing you, am I? Hi, I'm the host, David Hickey. I'll be Liz interviewing Liz. <laughs> okay, here we go. One more time. Welcome back to The Gifted Ones, folks. I'm your host, Liz Throb, and today we have an incredibly gifted, talented artist with us. We are discussing all things music today, folks, and but with a, with a bit of a twist. This artist uses the most unique instruments, um, and how he came about to use these instruments is even more fascinating. So without further ado, let me introduce our, our guest, David Hickey. David has um, been performing throughout Canada and the United States for over 16 years and has done nearly like a little bit over 1,300 shows, I yeah, think, is I what think we saw. Yeah, more than that now. And he has released 10 CDs with more lined up to be released. David continues to blaze the trail for his unique blend of improvised music using obviously the unique instruments, which I had mentioned earlier. Now you are with Crystal Journey. That's the name of your company or your stage name? It's the, it's the, the name of the band, I guess, name if you will. Band. And my, my bandmates are my instruments. Though. I love it. So without further ado, David, welcome to the show. Thanks, Thank Liz. you Great to be here. so much for coming. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, let's just start with, because we discussed the instruments, can you tell us what instruments you do use? Absolutely. Well, I use a, an array of instruments, as you mentioned. It's I started off with the crystal bowls at the very beginning. Uh, we'll, we'll get into the, you know, how I, I got to that point. Yeah. And added a few things here and there, little chimes and bells. And and then, you know, I'm on tour out west, come across the gongs, get hit with that energy and add those to the, to the lineup and played with the bowls and the gongs for a while. And then along comes a vibraphone. Again, nothing I ever imagined playing with or, or even adding to what I was already uh, using as a, for the concerts. And then one of the instruments I brought today is called a santur. It's a Persian instrument. It's a very old instrument. Okay. Some people will liken it to a dulcimer, okay. uh, which this is much older. So it's, uh, it's from Iran. And wow. again, we can get into the details of how that showed up. But, and now I use a harmonica. And uh, just a little things here and there that add little orchestral flavors to what I do. So it's, it's a concert. It's I love you know, it. some people call what they do with these instruments sound baths, but my, mine's a concert. Sound baths. That's yeah, that's perfect. Right. Especially when we're using, I'm familiar with the singing, like yes. the, the, the crystal, crystal bowls. Singing bowls. Yeah. I am not familiar with this instrument, never heard of it or even seen it okay. before. So it's so interesting. And you did, um, tune up before we put the cameras on you. Yeah. And it was such an interesting sound. Oh, it's beautiful. Amazing. So we will get to that, folks. We're going to have him do a little little performance. Sound bite. Yeah, a little sound bite for us. Um, you mentioned that you came across this instrument uniquely. So can you explain that? Yeah, so I guess we'll we'll fast forward a little bit to the Santour. It's an yeah. instrument that I've added later on in the journey of Crystal Journey. But um, I was searching for something new. Uh, something to add to the gongs and the bowls. And I went through, you know, first I thought it might have been a percussive instrument, a drum, a djembe, something that had some sort of beat to it. Right. Um, and I tried a whole bunch of different, I tried a harmonium, I tried different various types of drums made from steel and aluminum, and they sounded great, but personally my journey with them they just didn't seem to fit with the right. idea of what it was that I was looking for which was interesting because they all seem to kind of fit in the genre of the music that I do but they didn't it didn't feel right so I I kind of stepped back for a little bit and thought well maybe I'm not supposed to add anything maybe it's just something I want to do and it's not what <laughs> what I'm supposed to do so I let it go for a while and then one night I had this very, very vivid dream, as, as real as me sitting here talking to you today. Whether or not that's real or not, it's another topic. Well, you know, we but, are talking on the gifted ones here. Absolutely. So. <laughs> and it was uh, very late at night, and 
I woke up from the dream and the Santor was what I was dreaming about. And it was so wow. real that I was able to recall from memory what it looked like and what the name was and go to the internet and do a Google search. And there it was. That's incredible. And I'm looking at it, you know, it's three, four o'clock in the morning. I'm looking at it online and I'm like, well, what the heck is this? It looks pretty complicated. <laughs> I yeah, don't want anything yeah. complicated. I want it, what I do to be easy because <laughs> yeah. it's all improvised. And so um, I order it. I uh, found, I took a little while to find the what I felt to be the right place to order it from. Yeah. There was some made in Canada, but something was telling me they needed to be made from the original place that they, they come from. So I found the manufacturer in Iran. And, you know, again, there was maybe 13, 14, 15 different model types. So, you know, what am I supposed to order here? What, which one? Wow. And finally, I, I settled on the one that I eventually got and it arrived eight weeks later. You know, I opened it up and I look at it and I'm like, now what? what am yeah, I like, to how do, do you this? learn? Like, you, you, clearly you're self-taught. I'm completely self-taught. Because I can't think of anybody being able to teach you that here not, in the country. Not here in right. Canada. Yeah. And, and not only that, the, I think the most... Uh, intimidating aspect of it was the tuning. There's 72 strings on it. So, you know, the bulls and the gongs, you don't have to tune. They're in tune, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know, come whatever if, uh, weather or whatever, they're in tune. So now I'm like, this is not what I want. I don't want difficult <laughs> instruments to have to either both learn how to play and tune at the same time. I can't have somebody come to each show and tune it for me. Yeah. So I, I just, I didn't even tune it up and started kind of noodling with it and sounded good. It was obviously out of tune. It just arrived from, you know, however many thousands of miles away wow. from a different climate into Canada. Of course, and yeah. I just stared at it for days. <laughs> and, you know, the universe has a, a, a sense of humor, I do believe, um, <laughs> whether it's, you know, in your favor or not. Yeah. And my first show I brought it to was in Oakville and set it up i wasn't even sure how i was going to play it or you know what what part of the show it would debut in and again the universe in its infinite mastery of humor had a few people from iran at the show that no night way. and they knew exactly what that instrument was and they asked me how long i'd been playing it for <laughs> and i <laughs> don't usually lie <laughs> or you know, I, I stretched the truth, but this <laughs> night I, I, I couldn't hide the, the fact that I told him, I said, I just got it. I've never played it before. And I had to really kind of quickly, you know, they were, well, why do you have it? Where yeah. did you get it from? And, yeah. and I told him what I just told you very quickly. And they didn't seem too phased by it, but I think they were a little confused as to, yeah. you know, like how you were going to play it if you never even, you know, so <laughs> exactly. and I thought the same thing. <laughs> so... I forgot about it, as I usually do. Once I start playing, everything kind of fades away into the distance, and I'm playing, and I come to the Centaur, and I play it, and it sounded okay, as I mentioned. Uh, it wasn't tuned up in any way. Um, it seemed to fit quite well with the bulls, so the bulls kind of added a, a tuning to it, if you will. Yeah. And after the show, they came up to me, and they said, not bad. Wow. It'll get better. Wow. And that's well over 10 years ago. That's and, amazing. And, you know, I don't like to say one instrument is more predominant over the other when I do a show. You know, some sometimes I play a lot of gongs. Sometimes I, I stretch it out and play a lot of Santour. And the bulls accompany both instruments. So right, right. Uh, it's it's Santour or gongs. And, um, but it is a beautiful instrument to play now. And most people... Most people don't know what it is. Some people do. If they're yeah. from that part of the world, they, you know, I've had they people come up and say, you know, my dad used to play it or, oh, you know, I can't believe you're, you know, it's bringing me back to my childhood, of that part of the world where they grew up. So that's, that's pretty cool. And nobody's ever, you know, come up to me and said, you're horrible. <laughs> it sounds terrible. Stop playing it. <laughs> yeah. At least not to my face anyway. Yeah. So I might have went home and thought it, but I, I respect the instrument. I love it. I am very honored that whomever brought this instrument to me trust me enough to to play it i mean i don't the story's not made up it sounds made up but no it doesn't sound made up to me and i think the audience would appreciate yeah. you know because th this is kind of how we navigate through our lives right yeah. when we trust what we're hearing that's guided in advice from otherworldly areas that, that can't be explained Dreams are, are um, sort of one of those things that I use a lot. I'll have 
very profound dreams. And same with you. I'll wake up and then I have to start looking. Um, just this morning I was woken up and told to look up a friend. And, um, you know, I did. I haven't seen this person in probably 20 years. And I couldn't find them anywhere. So now I'm on this mission now to find this person. Right. Strange. Yeah, right. Yeah. But like I hadn't thought of this person. They'd been completely out of my there was no falling out or anything. It was just life carries on and you kind of you know, distance from people from time to time. And so, yeah. So like these things will happen and you got to listen. Yes. You got to listen. Absolutely. Clearly, you've got to listen. Yes. Right. So can you explain how you discovered that this is what you wanted to do? You wanted to play instruments like you must have a natural, obviously a natural ability. Some people like my nephew has a natural ability mm -hmm. when it came to playing guitar, mm -hmm. it blew us all away. I pick up a guitar and it sounds like somebody's like hurting somebody. <laughs> I can't do it. Yeah. Um, but like, how did you discover? Well, you know, one of my models these, this, these days is, you know, stick to what you know and let everything else fall away. So this wasn't anything I planned on doing. I was at a crossroads in my life about 20 years ago trying to figure out what I'm here for. Right. And I had no clue. I went through a whole, you know, life check of, you know, what, what are my strengths? And at yes. that time, I really didn't feel like I had any. I knew I was a good person and I wanted to make a difference in the world. But what did that look like? Right. And I went through a whole, you know, you know, do I be, I was single at the time. I had a couple of dogs uh, who were, you know, were my life. But, you know, if I don't have purpose, then nothing else matters around me. My parents were pretty supportive, you know, and if they were, I'm sure they were quite worried about me because I seemed directionless, which I was to a degree, yeah. but I was open to find direction. And so I kind of just surrendered and I just, you know, I, I, do I become a priest? Do I become a monk? Do I move away? Do I go to another country? You know, I, I had no clue. no clue. There was no, nothing in front of me that seemed like the right thing to do. Right. So I, over the course of many, many months, I just, I guess I surrendered and Beautiful. was not knowing at the time, but now looking back, waiting for the call, if you will. Yeah. What do I do? And it was frustrating. And I was quite, you know, I was quite low, if you will. And, but not ready to give up. I think yeah. I had, I was presented with that choice. I can give up. Yeah. And I think that means different We've things. We've all been people. presented with that choice. Yeah. Right. And I think it's when we are in that moment that, you know, you can give up and you can walk, you can, you know, like in some cases it can be very dramatic for people and yes. they can go really extreme with yeah. that give up. Yeah. Um, or you can, you can just keep going and see what happens. Yes. And, you know, it's those moments I've found in my own personal journey that have switched the game up for me exponentially. Yes. Like just completely transformed who yeah. I am. So, yeah, sorry, carry on. I no. had to interrupt you there. No, and, and no, not at all. And, I, and I'm, still, I'm still doing that. Some days I feel, you know, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? What's the purpose? My wife and I talk all the time. What is the purpose of life? Some days right. there doesn't seem to be much purpose or yeah. even realistic, uh, you know, the pursuit of money and the way the world is right now, there seems to be less of a reason to be here. It's the planet's being destroyed on, you know, so many different levels, not just materially, but, yeah. um, you know, and before I came here today, you know, my daughter ran up to me to say goodbye. And I looked at my wife and I said, that's why we're here. It's a hundred percent why you're that's here. That's it. So, yeah, you know, if that's enough, which is a pretty big thing, it's another human being. We brought her into this world. It's up to us to look after her. Yeah. That's my catalyst these days for continuing. And beautiful. I don't know if I would even be here if it weren't for her. It's beautiful. And and it's I'm not depressed. No. I'm not. I just sometimes don't see any purpose to well, be here. Well, you know, the world is, is seemingly... Um, not a very pleasant place right now. It's not. Like, let's face it. The, a lot of people are feeling the uh, the pain and suffering, especially empathic people. I'm sus I suspect you are empathic. Um, people who feel and absorb um, other people's stuff and or world events as if it's happening to them personally. Yes. It feels very heavy. Um, but I can tell you, 
you know, from my own perspective, when I ask my spirit team, what, what is this, what's the purpose of all this? And, and the answers always come back. The only, the only, um, the only thing that's real, the only thing that's real and that you should always maintain focus on is love. That's it straight up. And it's not always about what you're getting. It's about what you give. So, you know, we all need that feeling of love from time to time, but you can only control what you put out. Yeah. So be that person. Yeah. Give as much as you can give. And it's incredible how quickly that love returns. That's right. It just does. Yeah. And when you have children, forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, yeah. it's funny what you, it's awesome. uh, while you're saying that, I'm thinking about my, my daughter's just recently discovered Barney. Oh no! And, um, Good luck to that one. Yeah, I, I was at first. My, I'm like, no, 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 we're not going there. Um, sorry, can't do it. But my my wife was like, it's okay. Even Barney's pretty cool. I remember thinking back in the day when Barney reared his head. I was like, I, I mean, I'm older, so yeah, I didn't yeah. grow up with Barney. But but now I, I'm I'm watching. You know, we watch Barney's Christmas and and Bebop. Yes. Uh, yeah. Just learning the lesson of of giving as opposed to receiving. And Barney's trying to, to tell her exactly what you just said. You know, it's not just Christmas isn't about receiving. That's right. It's also about giving. Yeah. And, you know, my, my daughter's looking at that and you know, she is all about that. It's not a, really a lesson that she needs to learn. She came in knowing I, and, and feeling that the more you give, Absolutely. the more you get. You Absolutely. Know? And, and the, the, the love that we give her. The kids coming in today are quite different. They are. Than our generation of sure. kids and the generations before us, even my daughter's generation, I think they were the beginning. Um, my daughter's 27 now. And I think they were the, the beginning of the transformation yeah. of how we're going to approach life. They're going to be the ones, well, your generation of children, your child, um, the, the zero to 10 age group right yeah. now is the ones that are going to transform transform the world. So there's so much hope. There is. So much hope because these kids are just so different. Yeah. And, and the way, so like we were talking about your daughter. Let's yeah. go there. Um, before we, uh, b before we do the, did the show, you and I had a conversation yes. to kind of discuss what we were going to talk about. And, and your daughter came up and you had mentioned that she's had music in her life since inception. So, you know, can you explain how she reacts to music and how oh. it's cha changed her, yeah, transformed absolutely. her? It's, it's now it's become, uh, not an obsession with me and my wife, but just like an observation of, you know, what is this doing for her? We, she doesn't, she's not on the phone. She's not on the computer. She's not on the iPad. You know, we've really been mindful of keeping her away from that. Yeah. Uh, you know, we never, we never tell anybody what to do, but if somebody were to ask me, what's the biggest, you know, contributor to be her being the way she is, is she's not near the internet. Yeah. You know, some parents think it's a great thing that their kids are creative. Yeah. Um, and that's fine. That, yeah. That's, they're not, they're not our kids. So I would never tell anybody what to do, but yeah. the difference we see in her not being near that, you know, her imagination runs wild. She is more brain powered, I believe, than she would be if she were on the internet. And, you know, it's not, yeah, we're, we watch a video here and there, but yeah. I think, you know, Max, a week she's you know less than two hours watching something yeah you know, some kids are five ten hours a day on it yeah that's that that's you know again that's that's up to each parent individually but she listens to you know Bing Crosby with us Frank Sinatra the Rat Pack um, I mentioned Perfect. to you before you know we've taken her to see all the concerts that we go to Bob Dylan Fleetwood Mac yeah. the Who the Stones I'm sort of dead. jealous. Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's seen, you know, who's ever left of he's that. Who's ever left. Because I've seen, never seen Dylan. Yeah. I'd she's love to she's see seen him. Dylan 10 plus times. Oh, that's and, amazing. And it's not just, uh, you know, you, you see kids doing and uh, mimicking. They hear a song or they see a video or a nursery rhyme. It's just something they've memorized. Yeah. Not something they actually internalize or. Yeah. With her, she, you know, we're blown away at how accurate she is in what she's just heard. Yeah. She's not just listening. She's feeling it. Yes. And she can, you know, she's differentiating between the different monotones of, say, somebody like Frank Sinatra and Bing Crosby and those guys. Right. I mean, after years of listening, you can definitely tell who's who. But at a very young age, 
yeah. you know, we're, we're like, well, who's that? Is that Bing or Frank? And she goes, it's Bing. And, you know, <laughs> it's amazing. So it's, it's made her, I think, uh, a more wise person, a more open person. And, you know, music, music's my, my world. Yeah. And I would say, you know, music's a big part of my wife's world as well. Yeah. Um, just in a different capacity. Right. But our daughter, it's her world. I mean, we have uh, the, the satellite radio on all day. So again, you know, I say not, we're, we're, on the internet, listening to music, yeah. it's there, but yeah. so you got to kind of, I know, you know, I what know. do you do? You, you use it to, you yeah. know, you don't abuse it. Um, but we have, we have music on all day. We were, again, my wife and I were just saying last night, you know, some days, and our daughter's very healthy too, like in mind, body and spirit. And so she doesn't sleep <laughs> and she's never tired and the energy wow. she has is phenomenal. So sometimes she's up for 12, 13 hours a day. And we're homeschooling, so that's a long day for my wife. That's a long day for any you know, parent. She yeah. has the tough job. I've got the easy job, and yeah. it's seven days a week. So, yeah. But I said, you know, we were joking that, you know, most days we're listening to music 12 to 13 hours a day. And it's not background noise. We're all listening to, you know, if there's a song that we one of us likes, we listen to it together. Right. If there's a song that's caught a, our daughter's name is Olivia, if it's caught her attention, you know, we, we see her moving to it, and yeah. we see her... Uh, lipping the the lyrics and we, you know she's never read them. Yeah, she's just you know she's heard the song. It means something to her, and she it it's shaping her life. It's perfect. And and you mentioned you know um, you know again we were very conscious of uh, deciding to have a child, and we want you know we wanted we want to bring this beautiful child into our world. And right away we were you know very conscious of our surroundings, what we were eating where we yes. were going, who we were hanging out with. So Olivia was conceived with that idea in mind. And we have, and I, and I know a lot of parents try to do that and they yeah. have really good intentions of doing that. And sometimes life gets in the way. And so we've been really lucky to maintain that direction for seven years with her. And I know it's, it's not easy for everybody, but it's, no, the, it's what not. we've chosen to do. It's not. And, um, you know, and there's, there's a, Every, everything has a purpose and a reason. And, you know, like I can tell you, um, with my grandson, he loves silence. Mm -hmm. He likes, mm -hmm. he likes quiet time and silence time. But at the same time, as I was mentioning, both my grandchildren love classical music and are very creative when that's playing. So kids really respond to music 100%. in a great way. But yeah, no, it's amazing. Um, you know, with with that being said, does she play any of the instruments, your daughter? She does. She she certainly knows the technique. She's seen, you know, uh, of seeing all the other bands, she's seen Crystal Journey the most. Yeah. Uh, she she can play the Santour. She That's has amazing. the technique of how to use the mallets. It's all it's a it's more it's it's all wrist with, right. with playing this instrument. So she's you know I've never taught her. I've never sat down and said do it this way. She's yeah. just seen she's me. She's like her daddy. She's like her dad. Yeah. And so she can play that. She, play the bowls easy no problem and the gongs she you know she can you know grab the mallet and and give it a, a swing and you know she, she wouldn't be able to do a concert but she understands I bet how she could make a, an appearance she, in the she, and she has good yeah good, she's good, good. come and sat on my lap That's during awesome. the end of a show and you know I just let her play and people love it it's yeah. you know it's I think it's a one of those raw moments of that course. people appreciate at first i'm like oh you know it's a disruption of the concert but it's not no. and i just let it go and yeah. she comes in and it's perfect and she loves it she loves that now you mentioned the gongs and i was listening to an interview that you had done um with somebody else and you had he had brought up about the gongs being named after the planets or you'd brought that up mm -hmm. the, the planet gongs so can you describe that for our viewers? What for sure. you mean by that? Yeah. It, again, you know, when we talked earlier before the interview today, the live one, uh, you know, there's 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 a lot of different theories of the in, of the Santour is not really something that needs to be internalized. It's an instrument you play. Right. It's stringed. You can play it or not. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, I I think I play it okay. I would never call myself an expert, but I I can I can hold my own. The gongs and the bowls, you know, there's, you know, people think there needs to be workshops and, you know, different ways of playing it and certificates and courses are offered. I'm not of that mindset. It's, 
it's something you feel. Right. And, you know, I've been asked to teach and do workshops and I'm, I'm not a teacher. Nobody's taught me. Nobody, you know, I never obtained. <laughs> but that's because you're uniquely gifted. <laughs> so you have to understand that with somebody I'm, like me, I wouldn't know how to play those. I would be afraid of breaking it or hitting it too hard or, or for sure, you know, like I would, yeah. I would want somebody like you to guide me on how to do it. Yeah. So as much as you you get that, you know, it's not fair. People are charging people to learn this. It you're uniquely gifted. I understand right? that for sure. So maybe think of doing that for folks in for the sure. future. Well, <laughs> it, when anybody ever asked me, I just said, "Watch me." You know, just watch. <laughs> just how, watch you know, me. Just watch what I do. Yeah. It's uh, you know th there is a technique for sure. I'm not taking away from that aspect. Yeah. Uh, but you know, hundred hour course or yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, no. It's not necessary. Um, the gongs are you know traditionally you know you look at some of the rock bands. I was kind of looking in the last few days. You know. Keith Moon had a big gong behind That's him. That's right. I remember you know, that. Big, yeah. Big Peisty gong. He was um, my favorite drummer. You know, John Bonham from Led Zeppelin yeah. had one. Pink yeah. Floyd had one. So the gongs have been there. Yeah. And it was more of a, you know, those those guys struck it at a crescendo part of the whatever song they were playing. So yeah. it was just like a, a, a solid, yeah. you know, whack it and let yeah. it ring out. And I, that's cool. I mean, those are the... <laughs> I, I'm not a huge fan of Led Zeppelin, but I am The Who and oh, Pink Floyd. How can you say? Such I'm sorry. A thing? I know my my one of my best friends loves Zeppelin and he I, comes down on me all the Zeppelin. time. I yeah. appreciate their talent. Yeah, you don't get yeah. to where they were without yeah. talent, but they're they're not my favorite. Pink Floyd and The Who, that's a different story. 100. You know, yeah. my Love goodness. Them too. Yeah. So gongs traditionally back in the day were kind of one of those just one off. You know, it looks good in the back. I mean, Mick Fleetwood has a huge one behind. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, it's part absolutely. of the setup. Right. So it was, you know, whether it was struck or not during their concerts, it was there. It was seen. It was kind of like, a, wow, look at that. Yeah. Like a formidable force. So I think, you know, from that moment on, people viewed the gong as that. It's, uh, you know, if Keith Moon, I mean, I think I think even Keith Moon set it on fire once, <laughs> you know, <laughs> put gasoline on it and lit it up shocking. and, you know, shocking uh, <laughs> shock effect. But uh you know, I don't do that in my shows, not yet anyways. Yeah. Maybe when yeah, I get to Vegas, it'll be part of the show. But <laughs> so, and I've seen other videos where people are just hammering away at it. And, yeah. you know, that to me, that's kind of disrespecting the instrument. It's, you know, I find personally what I've learned over the years of playing is the gentler you play it, the more sound you get from it. Okay, and that's just my observation. So yeah. they're a very, I mean, they're, they're metal, so they're solid, but yeah. they're also a very delicate instrument. Every instrument's delicate in its own way, whatever it's made out of, whether yeah. it's stringed or wood yeah. or, uh, you know, again, you know, Pete Townsend used to smash his guitars. I and, know. You know, he had another one waiting, but yeah. um, it's, it's, uh, they're a beautiful instrument, not only to play, but to look at. They're very aesthetically pleasing. Oh, they're pleasing. so gorgeous. Yeah. You know, after almost, you know, you mentioned 16 years, I'm mean, almost 20 years doing this. Oh, wow. Okay. So, you know, after all these years, I never tire when I, when I set up for a show and I walk out of the room for a minute and I come back and I see them. I'm never like tired yeah. or tiring of looking at them. They're beautiful. And when people walk into the room where I'm performing and they've never seen a gong before, they're, they're already struck by how beautiful they are. Of so course. they're j much more than just an instrument. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, touching upon the, the planetary aspects. So the gong manufacturers, they're, they're handmade, hand tuned, hand forged, if you will, oh, wow. in okay. Germany and Switzerland. Some of the old guys have branched off and are creating their own versions of the original ones. Wow. But, so my understanding is that they're based on the Pythagoras' mathematical tuning frequencies of those particular planets. Amazing. And and back in the day, he was you know discredited as a lot of the right. guys who went further than just I need pr proof in the physical. Yeah. Um, he was able to figure out the frequencies of planets, and you know all these years later, these gongs are tuned to that frequency. I've had other people come up to me and say there's no sound in space. Uh, you know, again, it's it's not for me to debate or argue. I say at my concert, I, I if people ask me where they come from, why they have the planetary symbols on, I I mention that. Yeah. And then, and then I just say to me, it doesn't matter. They sound incredible. Yeah. And they don't sound like they're from this world. Yeah. They don't. They no. never have. And when I'm playing multiple ones at multiple times, I feel like. I'm not on this planet. I'm somewhere else. I'm being transported to another dimension, another galaxy, wherever it is. And it's them that 
is, you know, if you will, bringing that frequency in that takes away from where we are in that particular moment. That's basically what happens when you listen to music anyway. Pretty much. Is you get transformed, right? No matter who the artist, you know, no matter what genre you listen to, when you're really into it, you're really like, it takes you away. It takes you away. It takes you away. And so it doesn't surprise me that when you're playing it, you're completely in a trance. Like I would imagine. It's beautiful. Yeah. And, you know, kind of coming back to, you know, some of the artists I mentioned, the who and the, you know, I understand, you know, people always ask me, you know, what is your ritual afterwards? You know, what do you do when you're done playing? And it's extremely difficult to walk out of that energy, whether there's 10 people in the audience, a hundred, 200. Um, I've just recently played for a couple thousand people and, you know, I get why those guys had to do something to keep going after the show, because what do you do when you walk off stage in front of, you know, in in those, those guys cases, hundreds of thousands of people, you know, you don't just go back to your hotel room and watch a movie, you know, maybe, I mean, they do now, I guess, you know, (laughs) the ones that have survived have figured out a way to to maintain that, that health, uh, the health that you need to keep going, you know, but those guys back in the day were really, you know, self-medicating and, yes. but I understand, I used to kind of judge it, but now I kind of understand how difficult it would be to walk away and walk off stage and just be normal. If you yeah. will, you can't, you're not no. normal at yeah. that level. Uh, for me, you know, it's for me, my technique and what has evolved to allowing me to be, you know, grounded after a concert is tearing down and, and, you know, it takes me a good hour to pack everything up. So right. I'm able to kind of just use that time to, come out of the space that I'm in and be come back to reality, if you will. So I, I used to kind of look sense. at it as a, you know, like, do I really have to be doing this? N- yeah. Not from my ego that somebody else no, should be doing course, it, yeah. but like I just played, can I just like yeah. stay in this energy? Yeah. But I really appreciate now the fact that there's all different aspects of what I do that is part of the show. I don't set up, I don't play, I don't tear down, I don't go to the next show. So right. it's all part of it. Yes. People don't show up to the concert. I'm not playing. It's Plus, all do you do you see them like your children, your instruments? I see them as my, if you will, my tribe, my my family. Your tribe, for exactly. Sure. Yeah, because they're... I would be worried. Um, I often wondered that you know when you see at the end of a concert and everyone's tearing, you got a bunch of guys coming out, and I thought you know like if I if that was my work, I would be so afraid of having somebody else touch it. You know, like putting, taking drums down and all that. Like, I, I would I, be so afraid of that. For sure. And, and and I'm one of those guys that stays after a big concert to watch everything being torn down yeah, yeah. until the ushers come and kick you out. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, my understanding of that is each person has his own job to do. So the drum tech takes care of the drum. The drummer knows him. Yeah. The drummer knows, the tech knows the drummer. So he knows exactly he's going to treat it just it. as the drummer would. Right. A guitar tech, same thing. He knows that guitar inside and out for, you know, guy breaks a string, goes backstage, restrings it, brings it back. It's as right. if the, the, the performer did it himself. Okay. So I, the, I, I believe at that level, yeah. that's what's happening. That makes sense. Now for me, I'm not at that level, so I'm doing it all. And, you know, people have asked me over the years, can I touch them? And, you know, back in the day I used to say yes, but now I say no. Like yeah. this is my gear. They yeah. have my energy in it yeah. and I'm the one that handles them. That makes and sense. And it's, that's it, you know, yeah. and my wife's been really good at, you know, like this is your stuff and it's not a, it's not a hoarding of yeah. my stuff. It's, it's my sacred instruments, if you will. So, you know, I politely, you know, it's okay. And most people are like, oh, that's cool. I just had to ask. And yeah. I mean, the, people want to touch them because they're, they're pretty and, yeah, you know, like, course. what does it feel like? You hear it, yeah. but does it actually exist? You know, I think that's more of like, is it actually there? What I just heard, it shouldn't be there because it's yeah. not from this world. Yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. So. so like, it's, it's like the music is more like um, meditative, you know, it, it does transform the listener um, into meditation. Um, would you, would you agree with that? Like it's, it well, kind an, of. Helps you to release yeah. your mind, your thoughts, and you just get trans, transported, transported into the music. So to me, that's meditation. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, it's different thing for, for different people. Right. And uh, as I mentioned to you earlier, it's, you know, I've tried to stay away from it being classified as new agey or anything that would turn a certain amount of the population off from coming to see me play. And I'm fine yeah. with that. Yeah. Um, I might be a little bit more popular if I was more you know, as I mentioned, guru-ish. Well, you don't or, get 1,300 shows under your belt because you're not popular. Well, Let's face it. that's you hard work CDs, and determination. Right? It's not necessarily, you know, 
produce numbers over the years. I mean, I've played for one or two people at shows. Yeah. You know, yeah. I have. Yeah, and, yeah you of know, course. And, and, and no it's show is guaranteed. It's the same show, it's I a, bet. It's yeah. the same show. It's, uh, it's determination, hard work, and perseverance yeah. that have, have produced that. 100%. But, um, it's different things for different people. Some people, you know, I have regulars. You know, there have been people who have been coming for years. And yeah. I and I know, I, I know that they use it as a tool for them to go deeper. Yeah. People that show up for the first time who aren't quite sure what it is, I present it as a concert. It's very, I consider it to be very musical as yes. opposed to being, uh, you know, again, going down the route of the sound bath or like it's like a, it's you're coming and you're just like receiving whatever it is that the, the uh, performer is giving you. Right. I, I like to pre present this as a concert so everybody's open minded when they come in. And it is very musical. It's and, and it never, I never intended it to be that. Right. It's just evolved that way. So somebody who you know, I, was, I said to you, I was joking. It's mostly women that come to see me play, which yeah. you know is interesting. You know, so are, if you're are you more evolved there, or? Guys, <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. This is the concert to go to. It clearly. is Valentine's Day. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're playing on. I'm Valentine's playing on Valentine's Day. Day. Uh, we'll get to that after. Yeah. So you know, I've had women bring their husbands who, you know, just come and try it out. And they're like, yeah. I don't want to go to that. That's yeah, my husband. That's, that's not my thing. <laughs> yeah. But when they get there and, like, and, and, wow. and it's funny, a lot of the women tell me that they tell me like, I brought my husband, he didn't want to come. And I kind of like, I kind of seek the guy out or the man out. And, you know, it's like, Oh, I heard you, you know, you yeah. weren't really keen on coming. And he's yeah. like, not really. And they're always all honest, yeah. which I think yes. is great. It's you know? wonderful. Um, and I'm like, let me know how it is at the end of the night. Yeah. And nine times out of 10, they come up there. Like, That's not what I was expecting. Yeah. And they usually have left enjoying it. And I've seen a repeat of some of the husbands coming back. That's perfect. It's not, it's not, it's not the, the majority of my concert. Like people yeah. usually come uh, as a, as a single entity yeah. just to have that moment in time to themselves. Of course. Yeah. And for sure, some people meditate, some people go to sleep. Yeah. I think it's great. You know, yeah. like I've looked out and everybody's passed out a I room full of 50 it. people snoring, <laughs> too funny. gone, you know, <laughs> that's pretty amazing. I, you know? I, I was like, I have to admit that would be me passed because out. I would be, well, I wouldn't be, I'd be meditating, meditating, but it would be look like I'm passed out. I would be so deep in trance yeah, probably yeah, yeah. that yeah. it would look like I'm sleeping. And, and, you know, again, that kind of brings us to another question you asked me about, you know, what, what this means to me. And it's become a really, to me, uh, I will use the word sacred, yeah. the space that is being created. I, I don't take it for granted. I don't try to try to, for it to be anything other than it is, but it's, it has become a place where people feel safe. And I take that very seriously that yeah. I, you know, that when people come in, they feel, I, they trust me to deliver that element of safeness Perfect. in a world that is very lacking in that. I know. Very lacking. And so that's another element of this that I'm pleasantly surprised is evolved, uh, that people come and allow themselves to be vulnerable yes. and to go into a space with other people around them that they yeah. normally wouldn't do maybe even on their own, exactly. let alone with strangers around. Yeah. Them. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's, so it's that so that's for some what people. what makes the world a beautiful place because there's a lot of folks like you out there doing your thing. That's creating harmony for sure for the masses. Yeah. So, you know what, let's get you to, to show do a little the sample. Yeah. Okay. Do a little sample. Cool. Perfect.
clap for that one. That was amazing. Pretty cool, right? That was, no, that's beyond pretty cool. That was amazing. It's neat. And, uh, you know, the harmonica was just added recently. It's, it's, that's kind of a neat story, too. Some people don't love the harmonica, and I've had to, to sit with that, you know. A friend of mine said, you know, once people start criticizing, you know you've kind of made it. So, yeah. you know, oh, that's people are paying so attention true. to what you're, what you're doing. So, so true. So, I love uh, that. The harmonica appeared a few years ago. My, uh, my mom and dad just passed away in the last couple of years. I was Aww. very close to them. Yeah. And uh, we were living, we took, uh, we took it upon ourselves to look after my dad. So my wife and I and our little girl were splitting time between our house and his house. So we'd Perfect. bring him to our house and then go yeah. back to his place and then... We hadn't started to clean out my mom's stuff yet, so we let, we didn't want to upset my dad. So one night he was he was sleeping. So she, my wife said, "Let's let's start, you know, going through her stuff." And my daughter opened one of the lower drawers of her dresser and found my old harmonica that my mom bought wow. me when I was like five or six. And I remember it, but I thought, you know, I thought it disappeared of forty years ago. Yeah. My goodness, I hadn't seen it forever. Mothers have a way it. of doing that. They do. They keep stuff. She kept it. Yeah. It was, you know, it's one of the two dollar out of tune yeah. harmonicas from China. Um, and my daughter grabbed it and she'd never seen him a harmonica before and she started playing it and it's like, I heard it. I heard it. And my wife looked at me and she goes, I wonder if that would sound good with the bowls. So I went out to the to where I had my stuff and I grabbed a bowl and then I played the harmonica with it and it sounded okay. It sounded great. It sounded okay. And so that's how that kind of evolved. And a friend of mine bought me a good one. And let's see how this can fit into what you're doing. Yeah. And now, to me, I love it. When I'm playing the bowl, the santour, and the harmonica, what I'm hearing is like nothing else. So I've got that, I've got the frequencies of three very different instruments coming at me, through me, and I, I love what I hear. Some people, the harmonica is one of, you know, it's like the accordion or it's a, an instrument you either love or you don't like. Yeah. And I've had people come up to me like, when you started playing, I was really taken aback by it. But then I, you know, again, I have a, I would call a very open-minded, at times forgiving audience, even right. if they've never seen me before, because they don't know what they're expecting anyways. They don't come expecting to hear anything in particular. Yeah. So I can pretty much do whatever I want, which yeah. is really cool. Yeah, no doubt. Um, so, you know, some people have said, I didn't like it, but then I just, well, I either leave or sit with it. And the longer they sat with it, they said, the more they enjoyed it and realized how much it fit into what I was doing. Yeah. I've had professional harmonica players come up to me and same thing with the center. How long have you been playing? I'm like, a year, <laughs> not even. And so I'm embarrassed, you know, and they're, I'm like, and, they're, and then at the end of the show, I was like, how was it? And they're like, you're pretty good. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, the universe sends you little yeah. gifts of like, you're on the right track, stick yeah. with it. And that's yeah. a very difficult thing to do when you're in the public spotlight. And I admire people who, not from their ego or from like, I'm going to do whatever I want. Yeah, I don't care no. what people think. That's not me. Yeah. I care what people think. Yeah. But at the same time, I have to be real to myself yes. and present what it is that I enjoy doing. Otherwise, I'm not going to do what I do. That's right. Because it's not the show anymore. It's just become what other people want. That's right. And that's not what Crystal Journey is. Yeah. So I love it. And I am really finding this to become so much more enjoyable now that I've added all of these different types of instruments. That's not just a melodic uh, playing of the bowl, constant right. drone of just one sound. Yeah. And same with the gongs, one gong. Like I have eight to 10 to 12 gongs in a show. So That's I have a multitude amazing. of different sounds to create with. Yeah. And then add in the Santuri, it means 72 strings. It's added another flavor of it being more musical, which attracts more people from a musical perspective that it's like, oh yeah, it's a concert. It's an actual concert. It's an actual concert. So it's yeah. really evolved into something to me, really cool. Not anything that I ever thought I'd be doing in the first place, let alone yeah. it being what it is today that we're talking about. Yeah. So. Noel, you know, let's talk about these concerts that are coming up. You've got um, you've got one on Valentine's Day. Where's that being held? I, you know, we uh, we my wife and I are. I'm very nomadic. I brought my my wife into the world of being nomadic. So I. <laughs> You know, it's it's not easy to be. It's not easy to be nomadic. nomadic. I love I love the the randomness. The random. Of it. Yeah. It's it's uh, 
Now she, that being said, she's a, she's a veteran traveler. So she's no stranger to, you know, getting right. on a plane and going somewhere on a whim. Yeah. So, you know, but being on the road is very different than getting on a plane, checking into a hotel and then going home and back to your normal world. Yeah. So I commend her and, and our daughter's growing, growing up on the, on the road too. So it's, it's a little bit easier for my wife to say, okay, with our daughter being okay with it. Yes. A lot of children like stability and routine. Yeah. Our, our daughter likes the opposite of it. She wants the adventure. Yeah. So it, it, my wife, it's easier for her sometimes even to be on the road with our daughter because, you know, scenery's changing. You're not of in the course. same environment every day, which I know a lot of homeschooled parents find difficult that, you know, what do you do every day? You know, yeah. you got to take your kid to the library. You got to take them to activities and social clubs and that. We so. had a gal in uh, the studio last last week, um, Desiree, who circumnavigated the globe twice with her family. Yeah. And her journey was epic. epic. She she there there was positives and negatives to yep. it, obviously, like any life. For sure. Right? Yeah. So yeah, no, I don't see anything it negative. It can happen. In it. Yeah. It's, it's you know, it, it, it's it's not for everybody. Yeah. It certainly isn't. And yeah. I understand, you know, where people are like, I couldn't do that. And it because like you know, some days yeah. you don't know where you're gonna be and That's where you're gonna right. sleep and you know. Yeah. So, what town are we in again? What, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's uh, I appreciate the fact that we can tr- that's another element of the longevity of this for me i'm willing to travel yeah a lot of people you know it's not it's, it's not an easy setup to travel with i can imagine you know, like yeah. you know there's 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 more than just the instruments there's the the stage the lights the the racks for the gong so i'm traveling yeah. it's a it's a full-on band really yeah so a lot of people can't travel to do this so i'm able to go on the road because that's my commitment to this and Perfect. So we've got, you know, we've got a, we've got a bunch of shows coming up and we've, we just settled into the Niagara area just for the winter, just by chance, like everything else in our life. Yeah. And so I found this, I had played here before, but it's a beautiful venue that I've kind of rediscovered. It's in Ridgeway. It's called the Sanctuary. Perfect. And it's an old church converted into a music hall and the acoustics are fantastic. So I've played there. I played there years ago. And I've played there twice since moving to Niagara in the last couple months. And, and that's where Valentine's Day will be. Perfect. And we'll be there for spring equinox as well. And then I'll be back for, we're hitting the road. We're going out west for two months, starting in May. And then we come back for the summer solstice. So uh, we've got some really special gigs for where the solstice. Where out west are you going to be? We're going to be from, right from Ontario, right out to Vancouver Island and everywhere in between. Okay, so, so your, your Facebook page will have the dates Facebook and locations. Facebook page, the website. All, so anybody, because we have people from all over For watching sure. this. Yeah. So. Um, I'm just booking that now. I booked uh, nine shows yesterday. Wow. Um, from That's awesome. Manitoba to Vancouver Island. That's I've awesome. I've got about 35 more to go. But it's, it's, it's a, that's, that's another element of what I do. I mean, I'm, I'm chief cook and bottle washer with Crystal Drain. Yes. I don't have a manager. I don't have a booking agent. I don't play in bars. So I can't just, you know, I yeah. have to spend time searching and finding out the right venue and then yeah. also too trying to explain what it is that i do to somebody new and then agree to like all right well let's have that yeah. now again it's it's really cool because when i phone a venue and i tell them what they do they're like all right let's do it without yeah. even knowing what it is yeah yeah they have no clue but it, to them it sounds amazing and most of the venues i'll be doing on this west coast trip i've just played last year so they're all like people are waiting for you to they're come back for you so it, Perfect. It, it's it does get easier but canada is not an easy market either to be an artist, uh, yeah. any kind of artist, musician, uh, a poet, writer, whatever. It was just, yeah. this is not the support. It's too big. It's too vast. Yeah. People are spread out. We're looking at getting into the U.S. pretty soon. I'm just kind of waiting for things to settle down a bit down there. I don't blame but I you. think <laughs> you know, there's 400 million people waiting for Crystal Journey down there, and then Europe eventually, hopefully too. So oh yeah. There's lots of oh yeah plans for this. It's just waiting for the right moment. Yeah. You'll you know? know. You'll be shown. This taught me about patience, being yeah. patient. You'll, I used to want it all now. Like, why isn't this happening now? And that's yeah. not how life works. <laughs> yeah. Because you, it, it can't happen right now for whatever reason. For whatever reason. Exactly. And we trust that. Yeah, trust exactly. That. Now you've got um, 10 CDs currently out there, but you've got a couple here um, with Quartz Crystal, Crystal Journey with Quartz Crystal Bowls, and then you've got the Sacred Journey um, Home, um, a Tibetan Crystal Journey with Crystal Quartz Bowls, and how do I say that? Paste? Pa- paste? Yep. Gongs? Gongs. Perfect. So we'll have these superimposed so that anybody 
wanting to purchase Beautiful. these can get these from your do you you have your website as well you website share that? Yeah, yeah there's a store on the website so the the C, i've got a couple of new cds coming out it's been a while since i've recorded a new one the music's i used to record one or two cds a year and it was you know that's how quickly i believe the music was evolving and then in the, 2012 was the last time i recorded a cd and so that's you know eight years ago that's so you're a, overdue i'm overdue yeah and, and i Kind of looked back when we did, we just recorded again. We'd recorded at the sanctuary. So that's where we did the our, our new recording. And we were talking about, you know, wonder why it took so long to come out. But I started thinking about it while I was playing during the recording that, you know, the music had to get to this point to be what the new recording is about. Of course. And get to that point where I'm comfortable enough to be able to present what it is that I'm doing on a new CD as opposed to just pumping them out and okay, this is, it sounds like the last one, you know, it's like, Perfect. so I, the new CD is going to be a, a very accurate representation of where I'm at with the music right now. Now, that being said, every night is different and it evolves, you know, exponentially. I just played a performance on Sunday afternoon in Kitchener at a unity church and, oh, perfect. you know, I thought it'd be just a, you know, I'm going to play, it's going to sound good and yeah. off we go. And it was phenomenal. I was, you know, I looked up at the end and everybody's like, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> and I felt the same way. I did not expect it to be that yeah. powerful. Yeah. But it was, it was the full moon, too. And, you know, so, so there's lots of elements of, mm -hmm. of making it. But that's the beauty of this. I don't limit myself. Yeah. I don't ever go in saying it's going to be routine. Yeah. I might be like, okay, like I'm, my energy's a little low or I'm not really feeling like everybody's totally into it. But almost always at the end of the night, it's the complete opposite of that. Yeah. Everybody was into it. I was blown away about what I played, but it, I don't you limit myself You know it's a good either. thing. You know it's a good thing when your own work blows you away. It is. It's right? cool. That I'm I not still expecting. get that with my work. Yeah, yeah. And that I, I think if I ever got to the point where I wasn't surprised or excited or overwhelmed or whatever by the stuff that was coming to me, I don't think I'd enjoy it as much. Time to move on. Right? It would be yeah. time to move on. But yeah, yeah no. So that's amazing. I, I thought about that. I, you know, at this point in my life, you know, I don't know what I would do. So I'm really trying to keep this uh, <laughs> a very high uh, vi vibration so I can just keep enjoying it. Because, yeah. um, you know, I'm 52 now. I'm not, you know, I started when I was in my 30s. So I'm, I don't know what else that I would do. You're still young. I'm still you're young. You're still, you're I my know, age. I'm not old. Well, you're two years older than me. But yeah, we're still young. We're, we're still young, my we're friend. We're that unique. Uh, exactly. You know, I'm glad I'm where I'm at. Yeah. You know, age wise, I wouldn't want. I personally wouldn't want to be starting over. I wouldn't want to be starting no. out today. I feel for I anybody. I do too. Yeah. I really for do. the younger generation today. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a difficult ride for them. Yeah. You know. But you know what? Every generation has its difficulties. Some are unique to that generation. Some are constant in every generation. But, you know hard work and perseverance and follow your passion for sure. You know, if I had to just, well, actually I did follow my passions and every, like I had multiple careers, um, prior to settling into this specifically, the psychic work. Um, and every single career had its role to play in my yes, life. For sure. Right. And yeah. I'm sure you felt the same way. Yeah. Um, but you know, this is all about vibration what you're doing. It's all about raising the vibration for others and yourself. And it's just awesome. That's so right. thank, thank you, you for, for playing for us today. And thank you for being here. Absolutely. I it's enjoyed it. It's been an absolute Anytime. pleasure. I love to talk. <laughs> that's that's a good thing yes, i would is. hate to have you sitting here and not say anything <laughs> and i get i mentioned this the website crystaljourney.ca crystaljourney.ca and we'll have the the um information Underneath, below perfect. as well so and it's perfect. uh you know i was mentioning to you my, my wife's uh, uh not on social media and i'm all over social media yeah i have three facebook pages instagram so check it out um i i, I post everything about the music and the journey and it's a, you know, that's another cool thing. You know, there's a lot of people who can't get out. Yeah. You know, I was mentioning the internet earlier. It has its value and its merit for sure. When yeah. I'm on tour and I'm traveling, you know, people always send me a message saying, thank you for sharing your journey. Exactly. We can't leave the house or we don't have the means to, to do what you're doing. So yeah. I take that to heart too. It's a very important part of what I do to share the journey exactly. with people who, you know, love it but can't yeah. come to every show or they can't even leave the house some people yeah. so i i really try to make that a personal thing too that 
I'm sharing what it is that I feel. And, and I know it comes through because people send me messages. And, and again, perfect. I don't take it for granted or, you know, I, everybody, every person means something to me, yeah. whether it's, you know, and, and that's the people that I know of, too. That's my wife have been discussing lately. And there's probably lots of people we don't know. That's so that that's always the way to. it so, is. Yeah. You, it's surprising how many yeah. people you don't you're not aware of. I'm not aware of. Well, thank you so thanks, much Liz. again. And thanks, everyone else, for joining us on the show. And be sure to like and follow Giant TV folks, you know, in order to get notifications of the new shows coming up. Um, you need to be following that and um, obviously the gifted ones as well. We look forward to seeing you on the next show.